I'm sure you've all heard of jump resetting, one of the most commonly used techniques when it comes to Minecraft Bedrock PvP. Although you may think you're already good at it, I can nearly guarantee that in this video you will learn at least one new thing about jump resetting. Now you may be thinking, why trust me? And yes, I am just one out of 17 million active Minecraft players making a YouTube video, but chances are I know a lot more to PvP than most of you do. I'm currently Hive's best NA PvPer, and some could say I've mastered the technique, jump resetting. So in this video, I'll be going in depth on how to jump reset and showing you a few secrets that I have that will help you get better at jump resetting. Hit selecting should be the first thing you do going into a trade if you want to pick up your opponent. I would not recommend this for no armor trades or any trade where you don't have as much tries to pick your opponent up. So how does hit selecting work? Hit selecting is purposefully getting second hit to hit the ground faster than your opponent. The reason why this is useful is because jump resetting works when you time your jump perfectly when you hit the floor to boost your momentum, thus reducing your knockback. And don't worry, later on in this video, I will explain my secret on how to accurately tell when you hit the ground to have perfect jump resets. Hit selecting is very simple. The second you hear the opponent hit you, you hit back. Along with this, after you hit back, you wanna let go of W and press it again with your spacebar right as you hit the ground. Now that you know how to hit select, Let's talk about where to aim. A common misconception in Minecraft PvP is aim straight for the head when going into a trade. And yes, this does increase your chances of getting first hit, but what many people don't know is that it actually decreases your chances of hitting a jump reset. Here's a slowed down clip of a jump reset from the top tier sumo player, Potatoes. If you look at his crosshair closely, he's aiming at his opponent's legs. Now, if we look at the second hit, he bobs his head down slightly towards the floor while pressing his spacebar, which makes him easier to jump reset. Now, although it may seem like you have to aim exactly like that, where to aim varies between what ping you have. To simplify this down, this is how it'll affect your aim. I'll explain where you should aim for each type of connection speed you have to the hive. For zero to 30 pinged players, aim at waist first hit, bob down your crosshair to the feet on the second hit. For 31 to 60 pinged players, Aim at the middle of the chest plate, first hit, bob down to waist, second hit. For 61 to 100 ping players, aim just below the head, first hit, bob down to the middle of the chest plate, second hit. And if you have any ping above 100, aim at the middle of the head, first hit, bob down slightly below the neck, second hit. If you don't know how to check your ping, you can either go to the featured server list and check your connection to the Hive server or you can type the command shown on screen into your command prompt. Now we can move on to how you should time your spacebar. A lot of people don't know that there are two ways to jump reset. The first method is timing your jump reset just a little bit before your hit cooldown ends, which will make you get a little bit of a forward boost when you jump reset. The closer you click your spacebar to the end of the hit cooldown, the more you get boosted. I would recommend doing this method when you are fighting people with lower ping than you because oftentimes their KB will react faster than yours and get them away from you faster than you can hit them. The second method is timing your jump reset anytime you're off your hit cooldown. When doing this, you should cancel out nearly all your KB, but you won't get a boost forward. This is extremely helpful when fighting people 50 or more ping higher than you. Nearly everyone in this video knows what the range of CPS is, but did you know that 12 CPS can actually be better than 15 CPS for PvP? Let me explain. As I said before, jump resetting only works when you hit the ground. 
Luckily, the amount of time it takes to touch the ground is the exact same amount of time as the Minecraft hit cooldown, 500 milliseconds. By activating Paper Doll or looking at your hand while you're PvP, and you can see exactly when you're out of your hit cooldown, which is when you have just stopped turning red. The reason why 12 CPS can be better than 15 is because it is a multiple of 2, otherwise known as a multiple of 500 milliseconds. When you are clicking exactly a multiple of 2, the time that your opponent is out of the hit cooldown is extremely little, preventing them from being able to hit their jump reset and boosting your chances of hitting yours. Have you ever wondered why it's so hard to jump reset against drag clickers? This is exactly why, because when you drag click, you are clicking enough CPS to make that time where your opponent is not red very low, making it nearly impossible to jump reset. But let's say you are unable to drag click. Here's how you can mimic the effect of drag clicking with any of your regular clicking methods. If you normal click 6 to 7 CPS, then try getting exactly 6 instead of varying between the two. If you jitter click 13 and just can't get 14, try slowing it down a bit and getting a consistent 12 to get better hit reg. If you butter or jitter 16 to 17, try finding a way to get exactly 16, once again, to help your hit reg. And so I think that concludes this video. I went through pretty much everything I know about jump resetting. I do know a few more things, but those are secrets just for me. If you want me to release them, please like and subscribe because it's literally free and it helps me out so much. I'll see y'all later.